you know they're out there. They're hiding in plain sight, a secret society living among us. Have you ever wondered what crawls, flies, and hops around in the city streets even when you're not looking? Well, get out your magnifying glass because we're about to explore the hidden world of city bugs. These tiny urban explorers are everywhere, from cracks in the sidewalk to the tips of the treetops, and they've got some itty bitty little secrets to share. Let's zoom in on these city bugs. Want a souvenir of our journey? Check out our fact-filled activity sheets for sale now in the Socratica Foundation store. Find the links below. Let's start with one of the most infamous city bugs, the cockroach. These critters might not always be fun to look at, but they're actually very impressive insects with even more impressive survival skills. Cockroaches have been around since the time of the dinosaurs, which means they've been scuttling across the earth for over 300 million years. What's their secret? When resources are scarce, they can slow their metabolism way down, almost like hibernating. They can live almost a month without food and about a week without water. And get this, cockroaches can hold their breath for up to 40 minutes and can even survive without their head for a whole week. Ew. Even with their head, generally cockroaches are a pretty quiet bug, but you know who's not? The cricket. Crickets are known as the musicians of the insect world. Crickets rub their wings together to create their famous chirping sound, which allows them to attract a mate. Did you know that only male crickets can chirp? It's true. Crickets are insects because just like all other insects, they have six legs, three body parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen, two antennae, and an exoskeleton. An exoskeleton is a hard outer layer that allows the cricket to maintain its shape because they don't have bones like us. Crickets are known for their impressive jumping ability. They can move one meter in just one hop. Crickets don't usually fly, but you know who does? The housefly. These insects can do more than just dodge our fly swatters. They have incredible eyesight with their large compound eyes that can see in almost all directions at once. Houseflies aren't picky eaters. They love feasting on anything wet, which includes food scraps and trash, making cities the perfect spot for them. It's important to keep flies away from our food since they can spread germs. But did you know the world of flies is way bigger than just houseflies? For example, there are giant horseflies, which can be pretty annoying for some animals, and tiny fruit flies that love to hover around your overripe bananas. Speaking of flying bugs that can be found in our homes, the next insect we have to discuss is the termite. Termites are often called silent destroyers because of their ability to eat through wood without being noticed. Termites live in large colonies that can contain up to a million members, all working together like a big family. But they're not just about destruction. Termites play an essential role in nature by breaking down dead wood and turning it into soil nutrients. However, in cities, termites can become a problem when they start munching on wooden structures of homes, causing damage that can be costly to repair. Here's another little animal that looks pretty similar to a termite, but look again. It's an ant. Ants are one of the few creatures that can survive almost anywhere, including our bustling cities. Like termites, ants are known for working as a team in large colonies which can contain thousands to hundreds of thousands of ants, all led by a queen whose main job is to lay eggs. In the cities, they're often seen marching in lines, searching for food to bring back to their nest, which can be located in cracks in the pavement, lawns, or even inside buildings. They eat just about anything, from crumbs and sweets to dead insects. Ants communicate using chemicals called pheromones, which help them tell each other where to find food or alert the colony to danger. It's those invisible pheromones the scouting ants use to trace a path between the nest and something good to eat. That's how they all know how to find your picnic. Moths, on the other hand, seem to get lost pretty easily. Have you ever seen a moth banging against a window or trying to get inside a lamp? Poor things, they're attracted to the light. Why? It's a bit of a mystery. 
Some scientists think it's because moths learn to find their way by moonlight, so they find artificial light very confusing. Moths have a reputation for being a little bit dull, but there's actually a lot to learn about them. There are many different types of moths. Pantry moths can be found snacking on your cereals and grains, while clothes moths have a taste for wool and silk. These tiny critters can ruin our food and clothing, but outside, they can actually be very helpful. Some moths pollinate flowers, which helps them to grow. They have a special love for pale flowers that shine in the moonlight. Now, you might wonder how moths are different from their close relatives, butterflies. One easy way to tell them apart is by looking at their antenna. Moths have feathery antenna, while butterflies have thin antenna with a little ball at the end. Moths are also usually more active during the night, while butterflies are more active during the day. Want to learn more? Be sure to check out our video on butterflies after you finish this video. Spiders are one of the most intriguing residents of our cities, and unlike most other city bugs we've talked about, they're not insects at all. They're arachnids. Here's how you can tell the difference. Spiders have eight legs and two main body parts, while insects have six legs and three main body parts. Spiders are skilled hunters, using their webs, speed, or camouflage to catch prey. And they play a crucial role in controlling insect populations and act as a natural pest control. Without spiders, our cities would be a lot buggier. Thanks for your help, spider friends. Next up, we have daddy longlegs. Daddy longlegs, often mistaken for spiders, are actually not spiders at all. They're a type of creature called a harvestman. They have long, thin legs compared to their small body, which is where they got their name. Unlike spiders, daddy longlegs have a single rounded body segment and they don't produce silk or spin webs. They're often found in gardens, forests, and yes, even in our cities, lurking in damp, shadow places. Daddy longlegs are harmless to humans. They don't have venom strong enough to affect us, and they don't bite. Cities can be noisy places, with car horns and sirens. Have you ever been outside and heard the sing-song sound of the cicada? Cicadas are known for the loud sounds they make, especially on summer days. These sounds are actually a call from male cicadas trying to attract a mate, and each species has its own unique tune. Cicadas spend most of their life underground, feeding on the sap from tree roots for several years before emerging into the sunlight. Once they emerge, they shed their outer shell, sprout wings, and begin the next phase of their life in the trees. Many cities are turned upside down when the cicadas come out in giant numbers. We're talking millions of them. They're not dangerous, just very messy. What do you think of when you hear this sound? Bzzz, bzzz. That's right, bees. Bees are buzzing wonders of nature known for pollinating flowers, which helps plants grow, breed, and produce food. They come in many varieties, but one of the most common is the honeybee, famous for producing honey and beeswax. In cities and towns, bees can be found in gardens, parks, and many more spots. Speaking of buzzing, Wasps are one of the most misunderstood inhabitants of our cities. Unlike bees, wasps are predators and hunt other insects to feed their young. This means they help to get rid of bugs that can damage our gardens and crops. While they can be aggressive if they feel threatened or their nest is disturbed, wasps generally prefer to avoid humans. Wasps come in many shapes and sizes, from the brightly colored yellow jackets to paper wasps, which build their unique paper like nests in places like the attics of our homes. You can tell wasps and bees apart by a few characteristics. Bees are fuzzier, collect pollen, and are more gentle, while wasps have smoother bodies, narrower waists, and can be a bit more aggressive. Want to remember the special colors and patterns of city bugs? Get out your colored pencils and markers and capture different city bugs in our coloring pages. Follow the links below for our activity pages that keep the smart fun going after the video. But we're not finished yet. Here's another city bug. 
We couldn't make a video about the important bug residents of our cities without mentioning the kind of bug with the most species. Beetles are the most diverse group of insects in the world, with hundreds of thousands of different kinds. Among these, a few stand out in our cities. First up, the ladybug, or the ladybird as it's known in some places. It's not just cute. It's a mighty pest hunter, gobbling up aphids and other garden pests to keep our plants healthy. Then there's the June bug, also called May beetles, which are known for their shiny green and gold shells. You can hear them coming by their loud buzzing noises as they fly around. But the real showstopper is the firefly, which isn't a fly at all, but a type of beetle. Fireflies light up the night with their glowing bodies through a process called bioluminescence. Bio meaning life, lumen meaning light, and essent meaning beginning. Put it all together and get bioluminescence or light life. Are there fireflies where you live? And there you have it, the bustling world of city bugs. Clearly. These tiny creatures lead fascinating lives right under our noses. From the hardworking bees to the misunderstood spider, each bug plays a role in our urban ecosystems. But what bugs did we leave out? There's mosquitoes, fleas, ticks, bed bugs. Oh no, are they all pests? You can watch our video about insect pests next. And don't forget to check out our coloring pages and activity sheets made just for you, linked below. Did you know that these videos are made possible by our donors? The Socratica Foundation is committed to making free educational resources for kids. Donate today.